Well, so the field of study that I work in is called complex systems, which is a field that covers a lot of different disciplines, economics, political science, biology, ecology. And really what inspired me is I was trained as an economist and mathematician. And the things I was learning in the sort of standard science didn't line up with the world I was seeing. So for example, in economics, I was learning that the world was in equilibrium. But when I looked at the world, it was not an equilibrium. It seemed like it was kind of a mess, especially the economic and political and social worlds. So I thought, boy, is there anybody out there that's doing anything to try and understand complex processes? And it turned out that there were some scientists doing this at some of the national laboratories in a place called the Santa Fe Institute and at the University of Michigan where I teach. And so because it resonated with my life experience and what I thought the world looked like, I decided to sort of join that tribe, so to speak, and do the work that they do. Oh, that's easy. So Leo Hurwitz, who has uh, won a Nobel Prize in economics, who was kind of a shadow advisor to me. He was visiting Northwestern from Minnesota when I was a grad student there, taught a class. And after class one day, he said, he said to me, Scott, he goes, here's some advice. Work with people smarter than you. <laughs> Probably, you know, the standard sort of vinegar and baking soda experiment, right, where you throw the vinegar in the baking soda and try and have it, um, you know, go a long way, you know, to have it sort of foam up. But then with my sons, we did stuff recently where we're like shooting corks out of using Mentos and Coke, which is, you know, the, this century's version of the uh, baking soda and vinegar. I think it's way more powerful. We were able to like, shoot corks a couple hundred feet in the yard, which was great. I, I think having control over what you do every day, I think what's really great about it is, especially as a social scientist, you look out there in the world and you think, okay, where do I see the problems, the challenges, the opportunities? You know, what, where can I help? And you can go and you can, you can move in that direction, move your research in that direction, and try and work on those sorts of problems. I think energy is the big one. I mean, the big difference between a great paper and a bad paper is rarely the idea. I mean, I think, you know, it's, but it's actually taking the idea and really pushing it. So it's often not the idea, it's fleshing it out. It's, it's working really, really hard. And what I've been doing, you know, through literally hundreds of talks around the country and around the world over the last five years is talking to people about the scientific benefits of diversity for systems. So if you think an ecosystem that all has the same species, you know, there's always one species that's not going to be as robust, as innovative, as productive as ones that has multiple species. If you a group of people that all thinks the same way, they're not going to be as innovative, as productive as one that contains people that think in lots of different ways. So to get people to take this topic, diversity, and take it out of two realms in which people typically feel uncomfortable, sort of the moral realm and the political realm, the legal realm, people are like, whoa, that's, you know, I don't want to talk about it, and moving it into sort of a science, fun, interesting, let's think about how this works realm. Oh, my wife, by far, yeah. No, I think that um, she's a political scientist at the University of Michigan, and she was, she's just, a, uh, I think, a, a broader thinker than I am, and also um, a really good filter. I think what's really surprising about the theory of complex systems, because it's so interdisciplinary, you have to really have an open mind and listen to what other people are saying and overcome jargon and stuff like that, that it's actually a happy, fun, light community of people. It's really nice people. They're people who pass sort of a you know, poke test. If you, you know, they, everybody really gets along and it's fun to hang out with people. Not a lot of big egos. Assuming I backed up my computer, <laughs> which I should have, assuming that I backed up my computer, then it would clearly be I've got um, just a stack of notepads in which I've written stuff that I haven't, you know, completely written out. So I'm on a plane or I'm sitting somewhere, I'll write down some mathematics or bits and pieces of models, and there's just a stack of these things that are the project I'm working on, and that's, that would just be lost. And so those, that's, the, that's the one thing I'd grab. And the art for my kids, which is right above it. I would say primarily jazz and bad 80s rock. I mean, the reality is I'm a rural kid from Michigan, and so if Bob Seger comes on the radio, we crank it up unless my wife's in the car. See, so the boys that I were, we're all Bob Seger. <laughs>